Hi, and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe how lipids and proteins can be used in respiration. So far on this topic, we've looked at how ATP is produced in respiration. We've focused on respiration using the carbohydrate glucose. The first stage of respiration is glycolysis. In glycolysis, the 6 carbon glucose molecule is first converted into two molecules of pyruvate, and each pyruvate has three carbons. During the link reaction, each pyruvate loses a carbon dioxide molecule, and the remaining two carbons form acetyl coenzyme A. The two acetyl coenzyme A molecules then enter the Krebs cycle. At each stage, energy is transferred either to ATP or to reduced hydrogen carriers, such as reduced NAD. And finally, in oxidative phosphorylation, the energy in the reduced hydrogen carriers is transferred to make more ATP. And remember that oxidative phosphorylation is the only stage that requires oxygen. Now, both lipids and proteins can also be used as respiratory substrates. I'm showing you the structure of a lipid molecule here. And remember that we looked at lipids in the topic on biological molecules. This is a triglyceride, such as those found in food. Now, a triglyceride molecule has two parts. On the left, we have the three carbon glycerol part. And on the right, we have the fatty acid parts. I should point out that the fatty acids in triglycerides normally have more carbon and hydrogen atoms than I'm showing here. You'll notice that one triglyceride molecule contains three fatty acids. The fatty acids and the glycerol are joined by three ester bonds, which I'm showing you here. Now, when triglycerides are digested, the ester bonds are hydrolyzed, and we release the glycerol and fatty acid molecules. The three carbon glycerol molecule enters glycolysis and is converted into pyruvate. This pyruvate then enters the link reaction and the Krebs cycle, as we've seen before. The fatty acid molecules are broken down into two carbon units, and each of these forms a molecule of acetyl coenzyme A. The acetyl coenzyme A now enters the Krebs cycle. Now, fatty acids contain a great deal of carbon to hydrogen bonds and form a very large number of acetyl coenzyme A molecules. So, triglycerides contain a great deal of stored energy. In fact, one gram of lipid contains around twice as much energy as one gram of carbohydrate, such as glucose. Now, we can also use proteins as a source of energy in respiration. First, the protein must be hydrolyzed to its individual amino acids during digestion. I'm showing you the structure of an amino acid here. This is the amino acid glycine. Now, there are 20 different amino acids, and each has a different structure. However, all the amino acids have an amino group. So, in the first stage, the amino group is removed. This is called deamination. The carbon part of the amino acid is then processed. Now, the pathway of this depends on the amino acid. Some amino acids lead to the production of pyruvate. Other amino acids can be converted into molecules that are part of the Krebs cycle. And the energy value of proteins is approximately the same as carbohydrates. In the next video, we look at how to calculate the respiratory quotient.